This is not even the test prints. Let me get the test prints. Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking another look at issue 602 because in my last video, a lot of you wanted before and after shots showing the effects of all these upgrades. And yes, that's a good idea. I definitely should have done that. I should have done testing to kind of prove to you that these upgrades are worth doing. So today, let's rectify that. Before we get into any results, let's go through the methodology so you know what I did. Before doing any upgrades, I did the following. Updated my printer to the latest firmware, which at the time was 3.3.1. I printed replacement parts and measured each of their masses. I determined the test prints that I'd be using for the testing. Printed baseline tests of the test prints to know how the printer performed with no upgrades at all. I purchased and received delivery of all the additional upgrade parts that I'd need to perform the upgrades. All parts which I've used will be linked in the description. And lastly, I settled on an upgrade order, which would be from the easiest to the hardest. For the test prints, I settled on a single wall cube, cylinder and cone, all 50 millimeters across. So across the base, across the diameter and across the sides. Well, they're also all 50 millimeters tall as well. It's just generally 50 millimeters everywhere, single wall, everything. The filament used is gray PLA from Filamentive and all the print settings are from the default Prusa profiles. Once the prints were complete, I labeled each of them. The cubes, unfortunately, were not labeled consistently. So after I did all the prints, I identified the seam location on each one of them. And as we go through, I'll show you on the screen where the label sits in comparison to the seam. That way, when you look through the images, you'll be able to know which side is which. So next, in the order I've specified, easiest to hardest, I went through and did all the upgrades and between each upgrade, performed the test print suite, which is one cylinder, one cube, and one cone, all on the bed at the same time. Out of the same PLA material, all running from the same G code every single time. For the post print analysis, I set up a photo rig where I could keep all the lighting, orientation and angles the same in order to take photos of every side of every shape and have them very easy to compare by just switching from image to image and everything stays in the same location with the same brightness and everything in that image. Some of these images I will show you during the comparisons that we do in a moment, but I will also try and make all of the images available in high resolution for you to go through and inspect them yourself. The method I've used to compare the results was to take the current print and compare it to the previous print. The prints were numbered from 1 to 13, with print 1 being the baseline, so the first comparison I did was between the baseline print 1 and the modification of test 1, which was print 2. I compared the prints and noted down any differences I noted between them. I compared the prints just by looking at them, observing all the different sides, and made a note of any differences that I noticed between this one and this one. You could argue that I would remember the order in which I did the upgrades and then that would give me a bias against what I knew or thought might be good and what might be bad and then that would affect the results of how I'm comparing them. But bear in mind that this testing took place over like a couple of weeks and I made no attempt whatsoever to remember the order in which I did the upgrades. And I did the comparison. I did like cubes on one day. In fact, I think it probably took me two. Then cylinders took another day and a bit, and then cones took another day. So it, like, it was quite a big gap between all these things. It wasn't like all condensed into one day and I remembered and just influenced the results. Obviously there will be some influence from that. I can't avoid that because I'm only one person. So yes, I did know the order of the upgrades at one point, but I didn't necessarily memorize them. Yes, I knew the numbers because they were all labeled, but I tried to avoid any bias where I could. A list of the general artifacts I was looking for is as follows. So first of course is 602, which is the extrusion inconsistency, where it either looks like layers are not sitting directly on top of each other, instead they look a little bit offset to one side or the other, or it just looks like one layer is kind of wider than the other and you know gives an uneven surface finish. This is most noticeable under light at an acute angle. The next artifact to notice is the vertical artifacts. So this is where the lines kind of run up the print instead of across. Uh, it's quite a noticeable kind of bump as you run your finger across it, you can feel it, you can see it. So I've referred to that as VAF just because 
that was a suitable thing to note down at the time. The next one is of course the seam. This is the join in the print that goes all the way up, generally one corner, or just vertically up, or again here, all the way up, just like that. And this is just a kind of join. It's not necessarily critical or related to 602, but it's something that was noticeably different as I looked through all the different prints. So of course I made notes about those differences that I saw. Next is the top 25%. This is not kind of a, these were the best and these were the worst. This is on the print, if you have it uh, sitting as if it was printed, the top 25% of layers approximately, it was just kind of a portion at the top, did tend to look slightly different than the rest of the print. The next artifact is ghosting. So this is where you have a sharp corner and as you go around the corner, that acceleration causes some vibration and you tend to see that corner kind of appear in more lines across the print. It will fade out as it goes from one side to the other, which does make it look distinctly different to the vertical artifacts, which can be distinguished all the way along their face. And lastly, we have 2S or second seam. Like, there's not actually a second seam. It's just ended up being the kind of nickname that I gave it. It's only visible on the cone and towards the top, there's just like this second little bit that looks roughly like a seam. There's some general artifacts around that area that were repeated in some prints. So I took note of that. There's not actually a second seam, only one seam per print. So without any further disruption, let's go take a look at the results and comparison with regard to print quality, the mass, the cost, the time it takes and all that kind of stuff. And then all that's necessary for you to do is to decide which upgrades you want to do and which ones you don't. Let's have a look. Test number one, upgrade 602 mode. This is where I put my printer back to a kind of 602 issue state. Well, more than it has been because I had sort of partly started to try and fix some of these issues. So I've just kind of loosened a couple of screws on here, loosen, you know, like the kind of things that you'd expect to cause 602. If you want to, you can just kind of ignore this line because the way I've done it, I've compared one line to the next. So, you know, it doesn't matter. The estimated cost is zero pounds. The mass change is zero, approximate time to complete, 30 seconds. So this is comparing print one and print two. The results are as follows. 602 got worse and the vertical artifacts improved. Do I recommend it? No. Test two, upgrade, tightening extruder mountings. Estimated cost, zero pounds. Mass change, zero, approximate time, two minutes. Comparing prints two and three. Results, 602 got worse, and the seam got worse. Do I recommend it? No. This one is a little bit of a funny one because ultimately tightening the screws on the back instead of them being really loose is a good idea. I suspect what I did here was over tighten them. I don't really remember, it was a few weeks ago now, but I think I probably deliberately over tightened them just to kind of exaggerate the point. You wanna get them cozy, snug, but not super tight because that will affect your results. Test number three, upgrade, Z-nut realignment. Estimated cost, zero pounds. Mass change, zero. Approximate time, two minutes. Comparing prints three and four. The results, 602 is improved. Seam also improved. Do I recommend it? Yes. Test number four. Upgrade, soft foot replacement. Estimated cost, five pounds. Mass change, plus 20 grams. Although note that this 20 grams is kind of to the base of the printer and not anything moving, so mass not necessarily important. Approximate time, five minutes, comparing prints four and five. Results, ghosting got worse. Do I recommend it? Mm, maybe. It's worth bearing in mind that changing this did actually make the printer fairly significantly louder. Test number five, upgrade, loosening extruder tension. Estimated cost, zero pounds. Mass change, zero. Approximate time, 30 seconds comparing prints five and six. Results, 602 improved, ghosting also improved. Recommended, yes. Test number six, upgrade, replacing extruder idler. Estimated cost, four pounds. Mass change, approximately 15 grams. Approximate time, five minutes, plus the printing time to print the part. Comparing prints six and seven. Results, fairly significant gaps appeared in the print, Ghosting was improved, 602 got worse. Do I recommend it? No. It's worth noting here that I did actually remove this idler after this test print because the effects of the print were so significant 
and the gaps were very major that I didn't want that to overshadow any other results that I could otherwise potentially see. So I immediately removed it and replaced it with the original. Test number seven, upgrade, replacing the belts. Estimated cost, 20 pounds. Mass change, about zero. Approximate time, 15 to 20 minutes. Comparing prints, seven and eight. Results, the gaps got worse. 602 is improved. And do I recommend it? Yes. Now, it's worth noting here that I did have another line afterwards, so let's go through that one first. Test number eight, replacing the belts, better tension. Estimated cost, zero pounds. Mass change, zero pounds. Approximate time, 30 seconds. Comparing prints, eight and nine. No more gaps, 602 improved. Recommended, yes. So if your information, when I replaced the belts, I forgot to tension them properly. So that had some fairly serious impacts on the movement. And so once I retightened the belts to their kind of proper tension, the issue pretty much went away. No more gaps, 602 looks a whole lot better then. Definitely worth doing. Test number nine, replacing the Z top and bottom. Estimated cost, about two to three pounds, just is the cost of the printed parts. Mass change, plus 24 grams. Approximate time, 15 minutes to do, and plus whatever print time it takes you to print the parts. Comparing prints nine and 10, and the results, ghosting was improved, 602, pretty much identical. Recommended, maybe. It kind of depends on this one. If you want to print an upgrade that's like this one, it does make replacing the motor and stuff a bit easier because as this gap at the front, which enables you to take those stepper motors with lead screws out a little bit easier, Otherwise, I mean, the ghosting was slightly better, so you could consider it if you really want to, but as I've said, not really necessary if it's 602 that you're concentrating on. Test number 10, upgrade, replacing both X ends. Estimated cost, three pounds, the price to print some parts. Mass change, plus 26 grams. Approximate time, 25 minutes, plus the printing time for the parts. Comparing prints, 10 and 11. Results. 602 improved and ghosting also improved. Recommended, yes. Test number 11, replacing LMA UU bearings to PLA bearings. Estimated cost, probably three to five pounds depending on how long it takes you to get your PLA bearings right. Mass change, minus 107 grams. Approximate time, 35 minutes plus quite a lot of time that it will take you to get your PLA bearings right. Comparing prints 11 and 12, the results, 602 got worse, vertical artifacts got worse, the seam got worse. Do I recommend it? Uh, no. One of the biggest problems with the PLA bearings is that because they're only plastic, when you try and mount them and you're kind of applying pressure to them in order to hold them tightly, then you, you really lose all the benefits of having the PLA bearings because you can just basically crush them immediately and you can get really high friction, it can be really unbalanced and all that kind of stuff. If you end up loosening them to the point where they slide a lot easier, then they end up sliding in their mount and they just, you end up, it's just, yeah. I don't recommend PLA bearings. Test number 12, upgrade, replacing the full extruder to R3 version. Estimated cost, five pounds, based on whatever it costs you to print the parts, because that's all it is. Mass change, plus 17 grams, Approximate time, 40 minutes probably to do the upgrade, plus the print time to print the parts. Comparing prints, 12 and 13. The results, everything looked very similar. Recommended, maybe. I mean, this one's a fairly complicated one. There is a lot changing when you do the entire extruder all in one go, but the results didn't really look significant. In terms of comparing side by side, as I've noted, everything looked pretty much identical. So, I mean, you'll probably notice differences in other areas, such as maybe when you do a benchy or you're doing overhangs and you have better cooling and things like that. But for the purposes of 602, on these specific prints that I did using my test suite with my filament, this filament, I didn't notice any significant difference. So to conclude, 10 potential upgrades for the Prusa Mark III were tested to see the results on 602. Four has a positive effect, three had a negative effect, and three seemed to make very little difference at all. Xenart realignment, loosening the extruder tension, replacing the belts and replacing both X ends had the greatest positive impact on 602. The soft foot replacement, Z top and bottom replacement and R3 extruder upgrade 
made very little difference, overtaking the extruder mounting, replacing the extruder idler, and swapping to PLA bearings all had the greatest negative effect of the upgrades tested on 602. So there you have it, a rapid summary of all the results and testing that I've conducted. I will try and make my results available for you so you can have a look online and make your own conclusions rather than just taking what I say as gospel, and I do recommend you do that. Making your own conclusions that is, not just trusting what I'm telling you. I have no further plan now to do any more work on 602, Quite frankly, I am a bit bored of it, and the issue wasn't that major to begin with. It was fairly obvious, especially once you've noticed it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that big a deal. And there does seem to have been some firmware changes that have also affected the amount of 602 that we seem to get. So that's also good. So to finish off, thank you very much to Filamentive for sending over the filament for me to do the testing. Thank you very much to all of you for being patient while I get this video out. It has taken me quite some time, if you like this kind of in-depth content, like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram for behind the scenes and cool stuff like that, and hit that bell notification down below if you want to be notified for the next video upload, which I'm sure you do, especially if you've watched this far. Thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next one. God, it's over.